is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Ride or ride. How you feeling, baby? You feeling good? Feeling good, man. About to get on my flight to Charlotte for the ACC championship game. So uh, another boarding process. We've done this a few times. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Uh, FSU's got to be a little nervous without that quarterback, bro. I mean, that's just, uh, it, you know, you've worked so hard to put yourself in this position. And I think their backup is banged up too, right? Aren't they dealing with several injuries there? So Yeah, Rod- that, Rodemaker uh, got hit pretty hard in the last game, and I guess it's debatable whether or not he's going to play in this. So you might have to see the freshman Brock Glenn play in this game. Yeah, dude, that's kind of crazy, man. And it's, you know, listen, man, I'm a UM guy, okay? But it, it would suck for any school. To, you know you're the best team in the conference by far. You've put yeah. yourself in that position. Now you're you're in position to win the ACC, and your best player is not there to put you over the top. Dude, I mean, that's like the worst luck there is. Nothing worse this time of year to have major injuries. And, you know, I feel bad. I, I don't know that Florida State could have won the national title even with Jordan Travis, but they certainly would have been in a better situation having him in there. And, and you know, who knows what would have happened. But, uh, yeah, it's just part of the breaks, man, of college football, and that's why depth is so important. So Ryan Day's uh, life isn't going as smooth, and here comes Mario <laughs> poaching. How about yeah. that? The Grinch, about the Grinch that? is still Christmas. Yeah, man, he's the Grinch. I think there's going to be a couple of guys that uh, could potentially be leaving Ohio State's class and coming to Miami. So uh, it's part of the brace in, in recruiting, man. Uh, Mario and the NIL, I've told you many times, though, Miami's NIL is very strong. I know everybody was nervous about Ruiz and what happens when Ruiz's money goes out the door. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that uh, they've got a strong NIL, and it helped them get this kid, Justin Scott, who's one of the best defensive linemen in the country. Five-star kid, legitimate by everybody. So, uh, heck of an athlete, and, you know, every great Miami championship team had some amazing defensive tackles, and that's where it's got to start. All right, hey, by the way, tell the goddamn flight attendant we're trying to do an interview here, okay? All right, man. All right? I'll get him to shut up. Here while we're doing this interview, okay? No, seriously, all right, all right. here. Uh, what, are we doing about, what are we doing about quarterback, bro? What, what are we hearing here? Well, I think there's a lot of options available. Uh, I like, you know, DJ Uyunglele, who played at Clemson before. And went to Oregon State this past year is an interesting name to me because he's kind of more of the mobile quarterback that you want to see uh, in this offense. I think, you know, a guy who can do it two ways. Uh, he's played enough college football. He's learned how to protect the ball a little bit better. Um, but I think, you know, in the end, Miami's going to end up with an air raid guy, probably a Will Rogers or a Cam Ward, somebody who can, you know, who's, who's in their last year and can come in and step in right away and contribute. The, another intriguing name is Dante Moore from UCLA, the five-star quarterback who, Basically rode the bench at UCLA this past season, and you know people seem to think he might end up at Michigan State, but you know it's a long process left to play out, man. I think in the next two weeks we'll know. What about a Tunga Vailoa? Right, right. Talia uh, is is certainly somebody worth uh, mentioning because he's a guy who's uh, been targeted by the collective, and you know wouldn't cost a whole lot of money because his brother's here, um, but he's got to get a waiver for one of those seasons because he's been playing since 2019 played five games at Alabama and would need a, an extra waiver to be able to get in. Oh, really? I, I did not know that. Okay. How is that a difficult process to achieve? Um, or, I mean, it's or because dealing, of the pandemic, it, 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 it might be easier to overcome. It just depends on what the NCAA wants to do, how much they're willing to actually help. And, you know, so it'll be an interesting situation to watch going forward, but every case is different. Though. Sometimes the NCAA is more lenient towards, certain guys over others. So uh, I, I just think one way or the other, Miami's going to have to pivot quickly. They can't just sort of throw all their eggs into the Tonga Vailoa basket and think he's going to get the waiver. You got to get, you know, a guy who's ready to come in and play no matter what. So that may force them into, you know, investing in somebody else. All right. So from what you've been able to dig up, is there a lead dog in all of this that you think there might be a lead <laughs> it's, dog? It, I know it's – I, I mean, I, Tonga – I'm sorry. No, no, you're not. You're not. I mean, I think Tonga Vailoa was that guy. And then I think after him, you know, Ward and Rogers are two other viable names. But there's more people that have come on the market. You know, Dante Moore is a guy who I know the coaching staff really, really liked. They made a strong uh, push for. That's okay. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, I'm trying to cross through the uh, through the aisles here. Um, they made a really strong push for him before. Hold on. I got to put my luggage up. One second, brother. 
This is excellent podcasting right here. Oh, it's all good. They're, all, they're, they're freaking out that you're wearing a Giants jersey. <laughs> they're freaking out because I'm wearing a Giants jersey. Yeah, oh, it's it's a ten dollars special, man. It's a ten dollars special. That's all. It it's is. like your it's like your Sorry Chargers. About that. One. It's like your Chargers <laughs> one. Exactly. I mean, this is all fantasy football related. Kenny Galladay won me a uh, fantasy championship a few years back before he became a terrible player, and I just uh, I like collecting jerseys of my fantasy guys. See, there you go, folks. So don't freak out. He's not rooting for the Giants. He hasn't teamed up with Will Manso, okay? No. And, and Steve Goldie Goldstein, because I think Goldie's also a Giants fan, if I'm correct. So, no, he hasn't yeah. teamed up with them uh, to join the Giant pods, okay? Relax. No. All no. right, so what's I'm a big next fantasy up? football guy. What's, a, what's, <laughs> the next, uh, what's the next thing on the radar for, for Mario and the Canes? What's going to well, happen with any coaches? Anything there? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you're probably going to see a couple of the, you know, assistant coaches. I don't think any of the coordinators are leaving, but I think you'll probably see, you know, maybe a couple of position coaches uh, get switched in and out. Just guys that, you know, Mario can upgrade his staff. He will. He's demoted guys before to analyst type roles so that he can bring in other assistant coaches. So you could see that kind of thing again. I think James Coley, who was once the offensive coordinator here and was on the staff at Texas A&M, he's an excellent recruiter. You know, he has ties to Mario, obviously. That's the kind of guy I think you know, depending on what happens here in, in the weeks ahead and what kind of jobs Coley can get, you know, I think he's the kind of guy that, you know, you, you could see on staff here. So, you know, we'll see. Um, but I don't think there's going to be major changes this offseason. I, I don't see like seven or eight guys leaving like we, like we saw a year ago. Okay. All right. Good stuff. What do you got going on in the athletics so uh, folks can check you out, my friend? Well, I just wrote a big article on how basically Louisville and FSU did the opposite of Clemson, uh, which is, you know, use the transfer portal where Clemson doesn't do it. And how that's basically how they built the two teams that are playing in the conference championship game this year. I, I talked to both coaches, um, you know, some players, um, just to ask how they did it. Because, you know, there's so many different ways to build, you know, championship level teams, teams that can make the playoff. And I think you, know, you look across college football, all the best teams still do it the old fashioned way. But they do sprinkle in a few transfers. I think FSU and, you know, Louisville were two teams that went aggressive through the transfer portal, which is a different approach. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so I wrote a, an article on that, and um, there's plenty of other stuff in there. I just did a new podcast uh, on my YouTube page for Wide Right on recruiting. So if people want to check that out, there's a ton of recruiting content. Um, uh, I had a friend of mine from Rivals.com join me, uh, Frank Tucker, who's very plugged in here in South Florida on the recruiting scene on 7 out 7. Uh, we did a show together. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's new. That's the fresh, the fresh content. I like it. I okay. like it. Follow me on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro. Safe travels, my friend. We will catch up next week. Have a great weekend. All right. You too, buddy. Take care. Sir, there you go. Manny Navarro, baby. Remember, use our code BIGO10, whether you're going online at canesware.com or you're going in person at 2566 South University Drive in Davie, literally next to La Spada. Okay? When is La Spada going to become a sponsor? We're giving them all these plugs. Anyway. Right there, Canesware. Go see my guys out there. They will take care of you. Trust me. And use our code BIGO10, and you will get 10% off.